yeah, um, we will start off with a TM space and then um, before I take over, I will let my <laughs> EST, Junsen, to actually explain to you um, about the what we are going to talk about. So wait, before I let him take over, I will just let you know um, very quickly, like today in TM space, we will talk about something called the personal development plan. I think um, you all have heard of it before if you are paying attention when Lara was talking during the conference. Yeah, so um, it will be talking about PDP because we're going to let you kickstart PDP with your EB team because you just started your term so then you can kickstart the PDP. And then we have to educate you how to do it. Lor. So um, yeah, I will let Junsen to take over and then later I will take over. Cool, Junsen, you can start and then you can tell me like next so that I can press the screen. Oh. Uh, I thought I share my screen. Yeah, we are. So I say next now. What? Yeah. Oh, I start talking about PDP. <laughs> you, when you want me to click next, then you say next, now. Okay. Okay. Mm. Um. Okay. So hi everyone. My name is Junsen. Hi Junsen. Hi. Hi. <laughs> okay. So I'll be talking about uh, PDP, the Person Development Plan. So, um, yep, oh, okay, then uh, next. Okay, uh, wait, uh. so um, this uh, slide is actually used, uh, reused from hola. the time when I actually did um, this for AI. And then just to let you all know, like currently in AP, um, people who implement performance management is like just below 50%. So it's really bad. Uh. And then, um, why it's very important for us to know and also implement PDP is because TMMOS is percentage of members achieving their goals and like when we actually implement performance management, we are not just making sure people do their stuff but also at the same time they are learning through doing the things that they are doing in Isaac. Yeah, so that's why um, then when they are going through the outer journey which is implementing their task, um, they, we need to also uh, facilitate their inner journey and make sure that they are also developing themselves and they have the plan to develop themselves. That's why it's very important for have for us to have the PDP. Yeah. So um, yeah. So this whole thing is not to tell, teach you how to do performance management. It's only to teach you how to do PDP. Yeah. So Junson, you can take over now. Okay. Okay, so um, this is uh, one example of uh, the personal development plan tool that was prepared. Uh, it, the first spreadsheet, it contains the member's name and what is the function of the member. Uh, after that, uh, first thing first is to ask your members to fill up their initial LDA scores. And once they fill up, you collect the scores and you tabulate here in the and then, once you get your score ready, you prepare a one-to-one -one session or maybe a learning space with your other um, members and you have a debrief with them about the inference from their LDA score, discuss with them and or empower them to help them improve their LDA score. Next. Okay. Then, um, in, also in the first spreadsheet, um, below the LDA inference will be the induction spreadsheet tab. So inside here, um, there are a few stuff to take note of. First of all is uh, what is the difference between the categories. As you can see from a slide, organization means you provide an induction to your members. Functional, you provide them the, the, base, the onboarding uh, knowledge on what does your function do? So for example, if you're an OGV, you, you tell them what's OGV do, what are the things that you need to know, like 16 standards, lead nurturing, and all those. Uh, it will be transition. Transition is talk about what was uh, left by predecessor. And after that, it will be managerial, where you talk about uh, leadership, and leadership based on the uh, competence model. Okay. Next. Um, below the induction tab, it will be the SMART tab. So SMART is an acronym which where the full term means specific for S, M, X, 
actionable for A, relevant for R, and T for timely. Uh, inside the, the tab, specific means that uh, you do you talk to a member and you ask them what they actually want to achieve. And then for the measurable, the measurable will be uh, a, a question for the member to ask them how long do they, how long, uh, sorry, mm. how do they know when they have already achieved it? The action step, action, actionable means the action steps they can take to achieve their goal. Uh, relevant means uh, how is this goal applicable, applicable to the department or the function? And then timely last would be when do your member want to achieve the goal? Uh, one, the maximum goal for this smart is three, where the first goal is meant for departmental, while as the subsequent two goals will be meant for personal development. And after that, you provide a personal SWOT analysis on the guiding questions here. The first of all is strength. You ask them that what is the strength opportunity which we are what is the opportunity they have in life to fully and track what are the roadblocks for them to achieve their full potential then moving on it will be the career plan to talk to your members and you get to know their career plan inside and outside of Isaac so that they know how to so you know how to lead the member and you know how they can fulfill develop themselves and reach their full potential. Okay. Uh, next. So the last part in the first spreadsheet would be the app is more of like what do they need to achieve their goal. Like there, it has the knowledge, which tab, the skill tab, how and the status. Knowledge means uh, you ask your member to identify the knowledge and skills they need to achieve their SMART goal, which you said previously with them. Skills do they need? Uh, how, is, how do they use their skill to achieve the, that knowledge? And then after that, you do an audit or you check them whether they have achieved or not by putting the done or not done status at the end. Okay, shit. Okay. So um, next, uh, if you want to, or never mind. <laughs> okay, um, work with your members to do PDP each quarter. First spreadsheet is where you initially start to do PDP with them. Then you want to quarter one, where you, you of course do a follow up with them. Um, the smart goal copy it from the first PDP meeting from the first spreadsheet, and then. The results is how many percent of the goal that your member have achieved and expectation you can choose from expectation, average, achieve and overachieve. The score at the last step it contains a score. So the score will it has a formula based on the expectation you set for them. As you can see in the slide. Okay, next. And then uh, in the in the quarter tab, uh, there will be uh, sorry in the quarter spreadsheet there will be a tab where they talk about uh, how do you help your members to strive for their goal. And so you feel of your member based on the competence model and the Isaac values that your members demonstrate while executing the task. The expectation is still the same. Uh, you value them based on like. Like middle expectation is development falls below expectation, or average is inconsistent in meeting standards, and exit expectation, and so on. The score is uh, automatically generated also. And then at the end, we do a final review. The score is, as we see down there, the scoring is, is also formulated. This is the overall score of your member. and. That is part and, uh, next. Um, so here, right, for how do you strive for your goal, it's basically um, 
to evaluate how your member actually strive for their goal. So then, um, just to make it clear for you, is that this part, the smart risk goal, uh, smart risk like reviewing on their smart goal, and also how do you strive for your goal, whether or not you um, wish competence that you actually demonstrate and which Isaac value that you actually uphold when you're trying your goal this is actually being done independently by the member before they meet you for their um, PDP review yeah just to mm, let you know that before you actually meet them they are they supposed to already finish um, upload, uh, updating their progress Um, can I ask a question? Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Um. So from what I understand, if you mentioned that this is a quarterly thing, so does it mean that it um uh, how I mean like is what I understand is that it's like we update it quarterly or how frequently do we check on this app on what they should do or is it something like a coaching thing like a monthly one to one coaching? This could be used as a tool doing the one-to-one -one itself for the members to actually understand their own PDP. La. Is it something like that or, yeah, mm. basically that's my question. Yeah, um, I will answer that question later. Yeah, it's a good question. I'll answer it later. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so uh, moving on, there's another tab is uh, to check on what did your members actually learn. So uh, the members, they fill up their learning from their parents. Then you identify how to use their learning, um, either in personal or in professional life, and how it relates to their, sort of their strength, weakness, opportunities, or threat. And you end the uh, PDP for a quarter with the SMART goal for, their, for the next quarter. Okay, next. Okay. Um, then you ask, uh, then you talk to your members and you have a feedback session. Hey, wait, I missed it. Okay, so after you set the smart goal, you talk to your members what do you, your member want to learn until the next quarter and how do you and you ask a member how does it relate to their smart goal? How do they relate to their smart goal? Yes. And how does it contribute also to their smart goal? Are they going to learn it? And then, as usual, you check, follow up with them, and if they are done, just put done. If they are not done, they just put not done. You have a feedback session with members. So your, you provide a feedback for your team members for them to improve. Uh, of course, feedback is very important. And then you ask a member to give a feedback to you as a team leader so you know how to improve your team leader skills and management skills. So it's a win-win situation. Then asking a member if they are willing to continue to have talent planning purposes or talent reallocation purposes. Checklist them. Okay, next. Um, yeah, so the last part of the whole thing when you are reviewing their um, PDP is that you'll be asking them, um, do you wish to actually continue your Isaac journey? And then it's a yes or a no there. So if they say maybe or I don't know, then um, you just put it as a, a yes and then um, you can follow up conversation with them to actually understand why are they doubting or hesitating. Huh? So the purpose of having this is actually because um, we just want to have a very constant um, acknowledgement or like I don't know, reminder for us to know that um, who is having the intention to stay and who is having the intention to leave so that um, our recruitment process will not be only thinking about big scale MRD in spring or in September but also thinking about if whether or not we need any kind of pocket recruitment um, throughout the whole journey of the, the term. Yeah, so that is the purpose of it. Mm. And also to also know like the reallocation process 
on whether or not it needs to be done during the uh, experience. Yep. So, um, yeah, and then the cycle repeats uh, every quarter. Yeah. So, um, before we move on, um, is there any question, anything that anyone is unclear about? Um, in the in the percentage, uh, one of the percentage I can't remember which specific part is stated like um, if above ninety percent is overachieving and between seventy percent and ninety percent achieve. So by doing this, that doesn't mean that we are inst instilling the mindset that it's okay to only achieve seventy percent of your goal. You're considered as achieve. Uh, just a quick question, just to clarify. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. Um, Uh, yeah, it's a good question. Do, um, do, do, you, do, do you get me or did yeah, I miss me? Yeah, I understand you. Oh, um, oh okay. Totally understand you. Um, okay, so... Uh, okay, that's a very good question. But I didn't get any feedback from AI. <laughs> uh, um, okay. <laughs> jang, jang, jang. Yeah, it's a good thing to think about. <laughs> And then, um, okay, yeah, yeah, I need to, I need to rethink. Okay, so, in your opinion, um, what kind of percentage should it be? Because for me, I, I actually said like, um, eighty percent. It would be like, for me, it's super good already. Because like, let's say if you have three goals, eighty percent is like, you are achieving almost all three or like two and a half. It's super good already la, because this is quarter goal ma. And then we only need to limit to three goals. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, I think the word shouldn't be achieved if you want to word it like that. It, it because for me when I when I think I say achieve something it should be hundred percent. I I mean I'm coming from this perspective that I'm thinking. So if 70 to 90 percent, I mean 71 to 90 percent, it can be something like excellent or something. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, just an idea. Just something. Uh, okay, okay, then I, I, I need to ask um, AI about this because the expectation part is um, being uh, set by AI. Yeah, I need to ask uh, whether or not um, it is okay. Okay, can. Yeah, thank you for the feedback. Any other? Uh, so I have another question. Uh, you stated that uh, every quarterly we will do talent relocations. Is it? Uh, no, 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 no. It's not a must. It's just, um, I would say, a data for us to know what needs to happen for in terms of the human resource. It doesn't mean that we must do it. Not. It's just to, um, it's just for this purpose. Uh, that's why we need to ask. If not, we don't know who actually willing to stay, who don't want to stay, this kind of stuff. And then suddenly people go MIA without us knowing. Yeah. Any other questions? Is it clear? Uh, yeah, I have one question. Mm -hmm. uh, just now it says that uh, when we're filling in this app, uh, this spreadsheet, right, we need to update it both here and also in Isaac Hub. So I'm like wondering if we want to update it in Isaac ah, Hub where... Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, so... Eh, why is it not going up? Um, so... Okay, I don't know what happened. Um, basically, yeah, the tool inside they say, uh, please update here and update in Isaac Hub. Um, but then, after um, thinking about it, I feel like it's very redundant to update in two places. So, um, for this PDP, um, okay, for this PDP, uh, you will just use the spreadsheet. And then for Isaac Hub um, Performance Management Implementation, it's only going to be used as a PA tool. So soon, we will not be using a spreadsheet PA tool anymore. We will be using um, Isaac Hub Performance Management tool for um, weekly performance management tracking. 
uh, and it also, yes. mm, and it also fulfilled the criteria of um, having hundred percent of Isaac Hub implementation. So this means that we're going to fill it in uh, Isaac Hub weekly, but for this one, it's quarterly, is it? Yes, correct. I see. Yeah, so Faye, about my previous question also about the one to one thing, is this supposed to be incorporated into a one to one on a monthly basis mm -hmm. or is it just like every quarter review? Hey, wait, ah. <laughs> Not yet there yet. <laughs> now it's question and answer. Oh okay. For the two. Okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> Any other question for regarding the two that you are not uh, familiar with or understand? Okay, so for this induction, right, um, just to clarify again, is that uh, 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 categories, so it means that because in the beginning of your term, looking at you as EB, la, you will receive transition mark. So um, your induction will be transition. You wouldn't have functional or organizational. And managerial, uh, you received it during the conference. Huh? So basically, um, this this whole uh, table is to allow your members or your team leaders to actually know that um, yeah, these are the, the, the platforms that you are you know these are the categories that you're gonna receive at the beginning of your term. Uh, yeah, at the beginning of your term, and then um, in this PDP when you set with them. Uh, you can also let them think oh, like um, what are the learning objectives and who will be the one to deliver this to them. Okay, so I take that as uh, I can move on. Cool, cool. Okay, cool. So, yep, um, if you are really, if you really want to know how it looks like, you can just um, refer to this link. Lah. And yeah, you can take a picture of it and stuff like that. Yeah. Then, um, 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 for localization into Isaac in Malaysia, um, me and my ESD will be working on it to actually, um, how to say, make it into 14 lc so that it's easier for you all to access instead of like going to the ai template to assess it yeah so we will figure it out how to um let the let 14 of you actually have the tools and then you can duplicate it by yourself for your own eb team okay cool oh one more question actually um is this this um because some of the area seems like for example, it's more suitable for new members, but how about like if for LCP to EB, do we do personal plan and Isaac induction everything also? Or what what do you think about it? Um, I would say because now you are also tracking on whether or not they are receiving transition sufficiently, right? So for induction you can just focus on transition. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Mm. Okay. So Yep. So then um I will just move on to answer um, to let you all know, lah. Okay, so this whole infographic is basically to wrap up whatever that um, Johnson was actually explaining to you. So uh, you can see, like, okay, how do I make this up? And then, yeah, so to give you a summary of what we have just gone through, first step is setting way forward based on your LDA. And then, um, yeah, ask for members' initial LDA score and then also the inferences. So inferences, you can get it from your expert, basically. After you're done with LDA, then they'll let you see which part is need to be in, in, uh, improved. And then after that, just copy and paste the inferences. And then you need to guide them. No? Then after that, um, design their personal development plan. Um, yeah, so maximum three goals only. So like, what Junson mentioned just now is setting one operational goal to be achieved within the quarter and setting two personal development goals to be achieved which can actually enable them to achieve their operational goal. 
so that it makes sense to have that kind of personal development. And then um, number three is to understand them better. So then um, you just guide them to determine what is their personal SWOT and there's already guiding question inside the spreadsheet. Yeah, and then set the career plan up in and outside of Isaac. And then you assign them the platform to acquire the skills and knowledge to achieve their goals and also their uh, whatever career plan. And then um, this feedback is when you actually have your performance uh, PDP review. Then you ask for feedback and then uh, at the end of every single PDP that you set with your member, need to make sure that you set the next meeting for PDP review, which also known as performance review. Yeah, this is the one set, uh, summary. Yeah, cool. Okay, cool. Uh, now is to answer Mike's question. Uh, personal development plan uh, method of delivery. So you all are aware of what, it, uh, what we call the global learning environment, right? So we can use different kind of global learning environment to yeah. actually set TDV. Yeah, so um, because remember when we in NEB, we actually sit down and did, uh, realize that in Malaysia, we are driven by personal experience or uh, personal stories and then we celebrate togetherness. So why not we also implement it when we do personal development plan, like using learning circle as one of the global learning environment. And you can actually do it during your departmental meeting or even during Isaac gathering. And then you bring your all. Or oh, this is a idea from Junson. Is like because Malaysians like to eat, so bring that out on tea time, or I don't know, like or I don't know, bring some snacks and then makan makan together while you set your PDP together. Yeah, this is mainly on um, if they are willing to actually do it in a group, uh, like when they set their mm. smart goal, when they set their uh, career plan, their um, what's that? Uh, their SWOT analysis, the LDA way forward, this kind of stuff, then, you know, you can let them have pair-to-pair -pair sharing or like share among the uh, whole team in a learning circle way to um, listen to each other's story and also hold each other accountable. Yeah. Then, uh, of course, in one-to-one, -one, another learning, uh, learning environment is that you sit down with your member individually if your member actually prefers to do it one to one to set the PDP, and then the second thing is, um, okay. So the second thing is to follow up on your member's PDP in monthly one to one. So like Mike said that um you set this already at the beginning of the term. Then when you have your one to one with your um team member or your LCVP, then um. You use the PDP as a tool to guide you to see whether or not they have been uh, improving on themselves in terms of their LD, uh, leadership quality, their career planning, their personal development uh, goal, this kind of stuff. So yeah, then there's a constant follow-up uh, and then you know how you can better guide them as a team leader. And then it can also be done in conference or seminar. This is also idea from Junsen to like have a tribal space to actually talk about what they about their own PDP and then you know share with each other like why you want to have this kind of development. Yeah. And then or even you can conduct a session to let everyone do their PDP on the spot or something. Yeah. Then the last one is individual discovery. Like I mentioned, they have to finish uh independently, like fill up their progress, their goal versus um, their achievement in their goal and then um, what kind of Isaac value they uphold, what kind of competence they, uh, what's it, they, 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 they portray. Then that is when they actually have individual discovery where they reflect upon themselves, their experience. So you remind them to reflect individually upon their experience and then you have your members to actually update their PDP progress before your meeting for performance review. Then in the in the meeting only you have like one to one with them, no? or you want to have learning circle with them to actually review on how they have done for their personal development plan and set goal for the next quarter. Yeah, so you can use these few delivery methods based on your preference as team leader and your leadership style, and also your members' preference.
Yeah. Any questions? Okay, so there's no more question, right? Then I can give back to Ewa, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you, LZP. And oh, wait, sorry, I forgot one thing. Um, uh, uh, wait, uh. Okay, so basically, um, because I was thinking, like, how can me and Ewa we were talking, like, then we were thinking, like, how can we. Um, allow LCP to do a very good quality PDP with their um, LCVP, then it's like, okay, so basically, um, you Eva came up with the idea to actually put you all in um, pairs. Like, LCP will be doing PDP with LCP, um, and then, yeah, then your PDP is already done, and then after you're done with the PDP, you fill up the, what's that called, the PDP tool, ma? and then after that, um, me and my ESC will see on whether or not you fill it correctly or not, and then we can. And then, if let's say, um, the two of you after you've done PDP with one another, then you can actually have both feedback session for one another, and then you can improve from there. Then, with that, you have your personal experience on PDP receiving and delivering. Then, you can start um, doing PDP with your LCVP. So, for the upcoming week it will be between LCP and then from then on you'll be doing with LCVP up until the end of February yeah so speaking of which um, I will show you your pairs so um, Mike you will do with your best friend James so you will do to eh? Why James got two? Okay, so basically Mike and James together, James and Fraser together, Fraser with CK together. Ah, I know already. Mike you do to James, James you do to Fraser, Fraser you do to CK, CK you do to Ricky, Ricky you do to Sean, Sean do to Iggy, Iggy to NPC, NPC must do PDP to Wan Chin, then Wan Chin will do PDP to Yan Min. Yaming will do PDP to Jin Xuan. Jin Xuan will do PDP to Kenny. Kenny will do to Ying. Ying will do to Tarani. Tarani to Junsen. So then we will know whether or not Mike is doing it correctly. Because Tarani will do to Junsen and Junsen will see whether or not Tarani is doing the PDP correctly. So make sure everyone actually do it correctly so that the flow will go good. And then Why no one do PDP for me? Eh? Uh, <laughs> because you're the king. Well, <laughs> well. <laughs> so it's all on you, Mike. You ask the most questions, so I think you're clear. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I do not know how. Okay, wait. Let's see. I can copy and paste this. How do I forward? Ah. So I forward to Alpha. Okay. Yeah. So I forward there, then your one no your pair. And then yeah. So um 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 further update on like the timeline and when should be done with PDP between L C P so that you can start with L C V P. I will um let you all know afterwards. Okay. Oh wait, one more question, one more question. When should we start it? Uh, okay. You yeah. mean that we should start it right now, is it? For this PDP? Or mm -hmm. after the LCP, the LCP one first? You will start after the L uh, you will start with your E B after you and L C P do it. Yeah. So I will come up with the Oh you will start with E B. Oh okay. So mm -hmm. we do with L C P first lah, before we actually start with our E B then only with our members. Correct? Yeah, true. Mm. And then, 
Yeah, lor. And then also, I want LCP to also have the um, responsibility to actually uh, let the LCVP and also the directors know that the ripple effect is um, is that LCP when they do um, PDP with the LCVP, then they will ex the LCVP will get to experience how uh, how is it like to do PDP, and then um, the LCVP can actually replicate this with the director and director will replicate it with their member. So once it is very good quality from the LCP, then um, LCVP can actually do it with their directors. And I think maybe if you want to have like extra, um, what is that called, one-to-one -one or anything, uh, to actually debrief the whole PDP process with your LCVP, to let them see the importance of the ripple effect, then you can also do that. Cool. Uh, I have a question. So uh, after we do the PDP, right, where do we save the thing or we need to send to who? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I already have the tool to actually uh, tabulate every single person's um, PDP. And then uh, I just need to release it out to the LCVP, PM and LCP. Then, um, yeah, because my me and Junson, we already discussed before about this and then we will just need to um, duplicate to every single LC and make sure every single LC VP PM uh, and LCP make sure that it is filled up because all the content inside your PDP personal tool um, will need to be transferred into that tool called the talent review tool so everybody's information is there okay another question is like um, our LC VP PM will also equip with the knowledge about this PDP right yeah yeah definitely Okay. Um, Supay? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I'm wondering why uh, the, the PDP setting is not uh, LC coach to LCP. Ah, okay. Yeah, we were thinking about that also. But then we want to uh, allow LCP to experience it with each other. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we want that to... We want you all to... Give each other feedback out, and then, uh, yeah, and then after that, from that onwards, then it will be, uh, MCP to LCP. Because uh, your direct, oh, person is Ewa. Yeah, because uh, the the reason why I ask like why not LC coach to LCP is because I believe that later when it's like the first session of the. LCP, they will have like a production session and also a presentation session. Maybe this also can be included as a as uh, even even the LC coach can track the development of the LCP under that. Uh, uh, so from my opinion, I feel it's better if, if it's like that because the LC coach can track our progress too. Mm. Since this thing is reviewed uh, quarterly. Hmm. Mm. Mm, okay. 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 Thank you for the suggestion. Yeah, I take it into consideration. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Sound disappointed. Hey, sorry. Ah. <laughs> okay. So I will pass back to Evalo. Thank you, LCP. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. You're welcome. Bye bye. 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 Bye Thank you, Sophie. Okay. Hey, you are not the call. Sayonara, Sayonara, Yeah, slip. Okay, hey, Zane, Zane, are you in the call? 
What, sir? You're right, huh? Hello? Sorry, what do you think? Sorry, didn't hear you. I'm... What the heck should I do in this? <laughs> it's okay, we are here with you. Uh, James success some more. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> PDP, uh, uh, what do you want to do in your Isaac journey? <laughs> Picture looks so. Mm. Oh my gosh, doesn't look like you. Who is that? Okay, wait, LCB, I want to cut your excitement for a while. Uh, so I already made the decision. Oops. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, ah. For a while, I need like one minute. Um, so basically, um, what ah? Just now, Iggy asked, right? Why not do it? I'll say coach, right? So basically, um, uh, one thing is now the first time is I want LCP to experience it with each other, no? Then I know that like, LCP very friend friend, ma, so you can give feedback very easily. Then to improve together, no? And then after that, LC coach will be following up with the LCP personally to improve on how you do the PDP and also to know no, how you are actually progressing in your own PDP. Yeah. <coughs> okay, oh. Huh? So, okay. Okay, you can continue with your chit chat. Just don't say while girl work because it's being recorded. <laughs> CK is here! <laughs> yeah, I told you. Uh, reminder. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? So that's all and I want to say that I'm really excited for this meeting. I think it's going to be, I will try to make it efficient so we can finish by 10.30 maximum. So the first part is to let you know about the topics. So one of them is about uh, February focus, um, then PDP, which we already covered, which is the PM space, then LC structure chain for IGT. Prosperity visit reminder and hosting a small training on how to host weekly meetings, which is like the highlight of the meeting. And then at the end, we'll have feedback. So for February focus is just to make sure that we are all on the same page of what are the things that we should be doing. Because I remember that when I started my LCP term and also when I started my MCP term, there are a lot of times that I don't know what's happening or I'm not sure what I should be tracking or what I should be focusing in. So to make it clear, um, because based on our timeline, if you see here, for February, March, and January, the key thing that we are doing is to prepare attraction um, and to execute uh, attraction. Sorry, to execute attraction activities and prepare for consideration. So right now, uh, key things that you should be tracking are signups, applicants, and the conversion from signup to applicant as well. And the global pick for attraction is March. So especially if you're a winter LC, you should be preparing. Uh, you should be already starting your attraction because based on your timeline, you are already back in school. And for those of you who are not back in school, you need to make sure that everything is ready to start attraction the moment that you're in, which is in one to two weeks. So that is the key things that should be happening in February based on timeline. But to make it more clearer or to let you know an overview of our operations right now, the targets for this month uh, based on our goals that we set in MPM is we need to achieve 1,500 signups for, uh, and so far we have 70 signups and then the gap is 1,430. Eh, actually, this is wrong. Wait. Yeah, 1,430 signups. 
and then uh yeah and then yeah, the print, right? yeah, yeah. The, the it was wrong the other uh, word and then 400 applicants and so far we only have 411 uh, applicants in february so in the first seven days we haven't done that good um so we're missing 389 applicants then for igv we have 1441 opens goal I already achieved 1196 so we're only missing 245 which if i'm not mistaken are already in the purpose of being approved uh, just as some things in the opportunity need to be fixed and then 925 applicants we have 153 and we're missing 772 applicants so what are the things that you need to be tracking in your lc to make sure that this is happening is basically uh, for OGV, uh, starting attraction based on product packaging. So as you know, in the conference, we already downscaled the product packaging. If you don't know what that is, uh, please tell me and I will share with you the tools. But basically what it is, is that uh, instead of selling like, okay, go on Global Volunteer, right now the way that your VPs are gonna be selling is that, for example, like go and uh, empower women in Sri Lanka. So you, we will be selling specific projects with one price that includes the flight ticket, the insurance, the accommodation, everything, EPF, TNF, everything in one flight, in one uh, package. And yeah, so already the LCs have all the information and then this week we're going to be releasing promotional material as well that you can start using for printing and for digital marketing as well. And then we have IGV, uh, same thing, starting attraction based on product packaging. So our IR partners are also packaging our opportunities. So start doing opportunity marketing. And then for PM, uh, uh, finish the talent planning and prepare for probation and MRD. So today you already had the PDP training. And then on Friday, you're going to have another meeting with the ESP and SUFE to talk about the probation period and MRD timeline and talent planning. So need to make sure that you are done. And based on the updates that Sufei has given me, a lot of the talent planning is actually missing. So it's very concerning since you need to make sure that you are you know how to manage your people, especially in this part before you get the recruitment done. And then FL, finishing budgeting for summer peak. So already all the budgets have been submitted, but they're receiving feedback from Cynthia as we speak, like in this period of time. And then for PD uh, to do sales for summer peak based on the new pricing model. So those are the things that uh, we are working on right now that you should be like the key focuses of um, of each of the departments. Yep. So I just want to know, is there any questions that you have or anything that you don't know uh, that you would like to clarify or that you would like to know before we go into the next topic? Yeah. Cool. So far, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Rick it's a cool. Mike, MPC, and CK. Cool. One chin. Awesome. So if that is cool, then we can go to the next topic, which is um, IGT structure change. So actually, during our replanning, one of the things that we were doing is that we were checking a lot of the <coughs> a lot of our structures and what are the key problems with our products right now. So we went through very deep. Uh, analysis of the past three years data where we analyze exactly what every MC term has been doing what are the good things the bad things the learnings for our products our performance and everything and then one thing that we realize is some challenges that we're having about the IGT structure in local level so the current structure that we have is that we have an LCVP IGT who has consideration of value delivery which is basically it's approvals and delivery and then we have the LCVPDs who have IGT and GE sales and at the same time IGV sales so some of the key concerns that we found based on the conference and also in our replanning analysis is that the the role is not enough in compar the ROI sorry is not enough in comparison to the investment because if you think about it if we're investing uh, a team inside another department and the the half of the focus of the PPD to focus on IGT and IGE sales um, is not the same when you compare to the ROI that you get from IGV where you have a team of people but the volume is way higher. So most of the time, the reason why we break out the structure is because it is too much for one, one department to handle. But this time what we see is the goals and also the performance that we're going to be able to achieve is not as high as the investment that we're making, um, especially because we don't have enough members to cover the structure. So right now, most LCs, they barely have VPs, uh, like people in GTGE directly specify in their, in their structure of PD or they don't even have people in IGT and they have people in PD. So because of this, it's really hard for us to start implementation with the product because there's a lot of lack of manpower right now. 
And then the processes are not established enough to handle the customer flow separately from one department to the other. And lastly, our conclusion based on the concerns is that we think that this change is ahead of our current capacity and that we were too ambitious to change the structure where we actually have very basic problems in the product in IGT. So be because of this, we were thinking to basically move the structure back to the original site where we have a LCVP, GT, and GE. And if they're running both products, then they have two directors, one for GT, one for uh, GE, and then they have teams inside uh, some that do value delivery and consideration and some that do sales. If you're only running GT, then you have one, one team for sales, one team for consideration and value delivery and like that. So what are the benefits of having this is that the, the process is simpler uh, for to manage the product because everything is under one VP, then it's easier to distribute the people. So what is the thing that in terms of change management needs to happen now is basically if you have a team of doing sales for IGT in your PD department, you just need to reallocate all those people to your VV, IGT, and GE. And then uh, Tavi will be managing the education for these, uh, for these people. And then Govi will no longer manage the, the GT network in PD. So then why we also decided to change that in MC level is because right now we have around 60 opportunities open. And in the past month, since Govi is doing sales for IGT, he has been able to close around 13 companies. But Govi's role as PD is to bring money to the LC and the opportunities haven't been, co haven't been converted to approvals. Because they haven't been converted to approvals or realizations, then money is not coming in. So he's not achieving his target because he's doing sales for a product that is not converting as fast as is needed. So that's why we think that um, since the ROI is so small, we are putting everything about sales and network management for sales under Tavi back again to the old structure. And then Govi is going to be focusing on university relations uh, sales for the long term of the organization. So he's going to be focusing on like engaging universities to make long term partnership for winter peak uh, 2018 and to accelerate process for summer peak 2018 as well. So his focus can be in something that will bring more ROI to the organization. So that is why we change his role and we're also changing the role locally. Um, and yeah, basically, I just want to know what are your questions or your doubts and what are the things that you expect. At the same time, just a disclaimer is that Tavi is really sick right now. He's in the hospital. Um, during replanning, he fell very sick. He has this viral fever. And uh, that's why right now I cannot give you a lot of information of the change management plan, but I just wanted to let you know what is happening and what is the thing that we need from you, which is basically to reallocate the people back to IGT. And then from our side, we will provide the education needed to the network um, for the whole process. <coughs> so any questions about this topic or not? Do you understand or you want to say anything? Um, I got a quick question. Yeah. I'll go. Uh, is it me? Uh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. So, <coughs> uh, can I know more on like what um that's the what what do you base the ROI on? Is it financially or can you tell me more on it? What what do you mean ROI based on the department? Like I don't quite <coughs> understand that. Can you yeah. Elaborate more. So it's about the volume of exchange is one thing, and then by consequence is money as well. Because if you think about it, let's say I'm a VPPD and then I need to focus on selling IGT, IGE, and GV, three products. So my focus will be very scattered. If IGT and IGE was converting fast enough, our process time currently is about 60 days. If IGT was converting fast enough, wait, sorry. <coughs> ah, sorry. Oh, by the way, the whole MC is sick, just to let you know, because of... Fever, like, uh, very weird but yeah anyway so if the if the if the uh, process time was faster for consideration then it would make sense because then that means that we are getting the idea of having sales that separated from IGT is that the people in IGT can convert very fast right like for example a department is selling like I sell 10 opportunities then in I don't know 20 days 30 days maximum we already have them converted but for the past month in uh, for the past month in MC level we've been working like that and it's not happening our process time is really slow so for the PD people to be selling it they will not bring money into the organization you know be and then also the volume is really low because our conversion is really slow so what we want to do is to make sure that our conversion process is fast so that then later on uh, in the future this is something that we can see that's why we conclude that it's not that it's a bad structure but it's ahead of our current capacity because currently there are some LCs that even have more people in PD than in IGT, which doesn't make sense. 
So, uh, yeah, and then because the conversion is so slow, like uh, we are worried about how the 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 situation is gonna go. And this is something that we didn't foresee last time when we were thinking of the com well because we thought this strategy will actually fix it. But when we look at the numbers deeply in replanning, we realize that it doesn't really make sense for the performance of the product right now, which is dropping in uh, in in GE globally top ten, and then uh, for GT. Uh, our conversion is really really slow even though we have a lot of opportunities opened so we want to make sure because it's a product that is not giving us results we don't want to invest more and more resources in it until it performs better and then only we invest more resources and especially because when Isaac in Malaysia was having IGT as a focus product which is 15 16 and 14 15 they had one structure which is IGT is doing everything from open until uh, BA like uh, until realizations and it, it was performing way more than now which means that for that kind of performance to happen you don't need to have two departments working on the product because it, it's already been done before so what we're thinking is that that structure is too advanced for the amount of performance that we're having in both MC and LC not only LC level but as a whole Isaac in Malaysia so ROI means not only money but also the volume of exchange in comparison to IGV is not a lot if you think about it right so that's why we're thinking like having a simpler structure can make sure that the process can be smoother in that sense. I don't know if it's clear my answer. Um, got a quick question. Um, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, um, no. Are you done yet, Yvonne? Sorry. I'm done. Okay. Um, my question is that like, because since you stated like, if the, if the issue is that the, con the conversion process is slow, would it be better if the IGET VP focus more on the conversion, then it will be able to improve the conversion time? I mean, I mean the process time aspect. That's, I'm just thinking of it from like yeah. this. I'm just putting yeah. it out. I know what you mean. Actually, that was also our intention. But let let me give you an example, which is MC. So in MC, Tavi for the past few months has only been doing conversion. He hasn't been doing sales, and Gobi has already sold more than thirteen companies, and he hasn't been able to convert as fast because our internal process is very slow. So that's one thing. Uh, so it already proves that having that kind of structure will not actually improve the conversion. Although that was our intention when we changed the structure as well, the same thing that you're saying. And I understand that argument as well. And then secondly, um, it's because it's about where do you want to put your focus? Like, do you prefer your PD to focus on selling more for IGT? Um, and then the VP IGT to convert faster or do you prefer your VP to focus fully in GV to make IGV sustainable because of the change of the product pricing? Because what we are seeing now is that there's a higher risk of us failing in the product pricing part because of the um, because of the reduction of the price for the EP, right? Like we need to make sure that the PD can really sell for IGV. But if it's having too many focuses like IGT, IGE and IGV, then it's also dangerous for it. So it will never be, even if, if, like, even if we perform or if we achieve our target, let's say in an LC, the goal might be like seven or eight IGT realizations. It would never be enough. Uh, it will never be equal as an LC being able to sustain their projects for IGV when they're doing like 70 or 80. Yeah, so it's about how you want to put your fo the focus of your people in your structure. And does that make sense with your overall focus and your strategy? Because right now, we're putting equal resources in IGT as in IGV when we know that IGV requires more resources than IGT. <clears throat> okay, uh, Mike, I don't know if I answered your question. Mike, are you there? Yeah, I need some time to think for a while. Yeah. Okay, Lo. Uh, CK, do you have any question? No? Okay. Anyone has question? Okay, Mike, if you have more questions, you can contact me directly. Yeah. It's fine. We can keep talking about it. Chan, cool. Thank you for asking. Okay, awesome. So then uh, the next part is about prosperity visits. Yay! Okay, so I already texted you, I sent you email, and then we also put it in Facebook already. So yeah, just to give you a bit more context in case you don't understand anything of what's happening or why are we doing this, and also because I wanna hear your input. 
if you agree with this idea or no actually so the first thing is about timeline and summer peak so um when we are doing an lc visit and this is a feedback that lara was giving us when we're doing planning is that at the end of the day like if you see things from an od perspective right like od job most of the time is to coordinate that activities to support the development of lcs are happening whether it's to through the creation of an od model that makes sense for the organization or whether it is through having lc visits functional or the whole lc or a team coordinating a team space for the ev team that is physical so that we can give more support to the lc to accelerate their operation to improve their team experience the team dynamic or to improve the way that they are working as a team to better the organization and the lc operation right so that's normally why we do lc visits but at the same time, LC visits have to happen on time so that it makes sense for your operations. A lot of time it happened, like even in my term as OD, that we cannot make the LC visit on time, which causes the LC to not be able to achieve, like the objective becomes irrelevant. Like by the time that you can actually have the visit, it becomes irrelevant. So what we decided in replanning is that we will only have LC visits with the LCs that can actually do it on the time that is requested which the LCs are like TU, UMP, JB, and I don't remember, ah, KP, which are the LCs that can do it on time. For the LCs that cannot do it on time, we cannot host the LC visit because it will lose, uh, it will lose the meaning and the relevance of the topic for the time that we are designing the LC visit for. And it doesn't mean, make sense to invest the, the, the budget for it. At the same time, if your LC, like the thing that I was also telling them is that if the LC needs something that is that doesn't require alignment to timeline, for example, something about team management or another activity with the MC coach is something that we can you can also request for and we can also tell it for you. But it will not be the same agenda of the LC visit. So I just want to clarify that it's not that we are neglecting you or not doing it and it's definitely not a long-term solution a long-term solution would be that we can align our timelines in a way that it can serve the operation timeline at the same time we can serve the lc needs not only in terms of operation but also in terms of the team because what we want to do in lcvc is that it's not only about reviewing operation but it's also capacity building team management uh space and talking about like um our culture as an organization and these things we don't want to do only operation part so because of all these things uh the way that we are the solution that we decide is to instead of pushing for us to have the date if it's really impossible for lcs right now then we will make sure that at least we have a we have a virtual space that we can do but the problem with virtual spaces is that people never attend so that's why we wanted to brand it uh for chinese new year like prosperity visit and we wanted to do it very very fast before chinese new year actually starts yeah so this is the schedule that we have and the topics um sorry the schedule and for the topics i sent you in the email but basically for igv is about opportunity marketing and uh ir and then for ogv is about product packaging and physical marketing and for finance is about uh, product investment and financial and cash flow management and then for pm is about mrd talent planning and probation period so all these topics um we are already creating a system for it which is um uh, we are going to reward uh, the LCs that have the most amount of points with free exchange. So how the point system works is that you need to make sure that you have 100% attendance and 100% call to action fulfillment. So for each of the education spaces, the MCBP will leave a call to action with a deadline and then we are going to have a scoreboard and then in that scoreboard you will be able to see the fulfillment of your call to action for example let's say it's the pm space and then the people who need to attend is lcp and vppm and then we will leave a call to action for vppm and a call to action for lcp and then if you both fulfill then uh, you you can get scoring for that and we will have bonus extra points for fulfillment of lcvp finance university uh, for lcp and and vp and vp finance so the LC who has the most points, then they will be, they will bring they will win the free exchange lab. So we have we're gonna invest 14 free exchange that we are giving to the LCs as a how to say an incentive for people to attend the the LC visit space the the prosperity visit um, space. Though. So what you can expect from us is tonight uh, we are going to to show you the tracker with the Ampau system, which is the the scoring system of the Ampau of each LC will have. And then we will show you the tracker, no? like each day, what is the the thing that we will be tracking and the deadlines. And also during the education itself, we're going to have daily updates of the call to action uh, completion. And your role is basically to get people registered as soon as possible. So last time I checked, which is like earlier today, we have um, 
around 22 people registered. So we are missing uh, more people. Hey, wait a second. Huh? Hey, can you be quiet? Huh? Thanks. Yeah, sorry. So uh, today we had uh, 22 people registered, if I'm not mistaken, which you can actually just go to this link and then your VPs can register there. No? And for you as LCPs, you, you need to attend the finance and the PM uh, space because those are your key synergies in your LC and they need your support also to implement for Summer Peak. Yep, so we're giving free exchange for people to go on Summer Peak and that's it. Um, if we have LC visit, are we still eligible to participate in this context? Oh, that's a very good question. I will ask, I will ask uh, my MC team and then I will let you know. It's a cool thing, right? I know. I know. Any more question? No, clear. Hey, are you excited though? Is it cool? It's cool. Okay, do you think you can make sure your people are attending? Hello? Yeah. Yeah, sure. I just want to know, is it is it possible for people to attend the spaces or not? Because we're doing this for you to be able to to perform that. So we're trying our best to invest money <coughs> and create content and everything. But I'm not sure if it's going to work or not. I just want to like get your opinion. Do you think it's a good solution? Or do you think it's not, or what? What is your opinion about it? So even uh, if we have the physically after visit, is it uh, not the same thing with the prosperity visit? It's the same content. Okay. So if we have a local uh, LC visit, so it doesn't mean that we need to attend, is it? You don't need to attend. <laughs> This is mainly for the LCVC okay, who, who don't have LCVC. But then, uh, because CK is asking me if they can participate, I will ask the MC and let you know. Because I don't know, we didn't so if, that. So if my VP want to attend again, then it's okay for them, right? Of course, this, they can attend. It's an open space. But I will ask if you are also eligible to win the free exchange. I don't know about that one part. Okay, okay. Yeah. But you know, they can attend, but it's the same content actually, the same sessions. So the MC is creating sessions, then tomorrow they will have dry run, and then they will educate each other on the content, and all the LC coaches that are going to visit, are they know already the content. And they're going to deliver that one. <clears throat> cool. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, um, Eva, uh, yeah. Eva, I have a question. Yeah. Tell me. Hello? Hello? Yeah, yeah, I have a question. Mm. Like, uh, because, like, my VPs cannot attend the session, so it's all that. I can only. So it's just like one time only. What? Um, for a session, right, because, like, uh, two of my EP won't be able to attend because they are traveling by flight uh, on the exact day. So I'm like wondering, uh, can they be replaced by someone else, or will there be any uh, like similar sessions for them, or are they going to be any videos or anything? Okay, if they are replaced okay. by someone else, I don't know if they can still win the award, I will ask. Asking about the scoring system, I'm just like wondering if there is any going to be like videos yeah. recorded or... Ah, okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. We will record. We will, will record for sure. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, for sure we will record. Okay. Uh, One more thing. Oh, oh, Michael, you go first. Huh? Sorry. Uh, um, I'm, I'm feeling the form, right? I don't know. Example OGV and IGV. <laughs> no, the, for like the OGV and IGV, that is twice, right? But then, like, for us to choose the option, it is only once. So we can only like choose one of it. Like, do we need to ask them to fill in twice? Like even for LCP, if we 
we actually need to attend for PM and FL, but in the form we can only just feel like choose for one, either PM or FL. Do we need to fill in again? Or like maybe you can change the... Because I think it's easier, I think it's easier for us if you register twice. Because then that or, way or I can register just twice. filter that time. Uh, it's easier for us to filter and count how many people will attend each session. Because they're all separate spaces. That's why it's easier ah, for okay, us to do okay, it okay. like that. Cool. Yeah. Okay, we'll inform GP. Yeah, Mike? Yes. Oh, now we have 44 responses. Wait, let me a minute to recall. I lost my thought already. Sorry. Okay. It's fine also if you remember later, you can just ask me, okay? Oh, oh, oh I recall already. Okay, okay. Yes, I remember. Uh, are MTs um, record? If I encourage my MTs to go, is that okay? For the, the video session? I mean, the online briefing. The, basically, yes. the whole prosperity visit. Is that okay? Yeah, I mean, anyone can come. The bare minimum is your VP and you. But if you want all your member to come, your director to come, that's awesome. That's even great. Okay, let me, can, can. Let me think if I can give extra points because of that. That would be cool. Wow, okay. Okay, because tonight we're building the, the scoring system, so I will talk about these things with them later. And then I will let you, I will let you know, like, I will take it into account. I think it's a good idea. Yeah, just remember the thing that will give you the most points is finishing the finance university actually. It will give a lot of bonus points. So just think about Wait, that. The finance, the finance university, do you mean only LCP or LCP FL or do I get my whole EB? No, 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 VP and LCP. Don't be too VP ambitious. VPFL, correct? Too That's ambitious, all right. Mike, always. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. LCP <laughs> and VPFL only. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So we're going to the last topic. And then for this topic, I just want to say the reason we're doing this is because of Mikey Pants, because he was asking me for MC meeting template. Then I was thinking, hey, you know what? I can just make a training about this in the next meeting. I think it's really relevant because right now you're all starting up your LC terms. And I think it's really important for you to know how to host team meetings. So what I'm going to do is I will take you through some of the theory and then uh, I will show you how we do MC meeting and I will give you some suggestion at the end. Um, and you can definitely ask questions of how the system works. So the first thing is to remember the objective of an of a EB meeting or a team meeting is to do performance tracking. So this is the inside of the performing uh, stage of team standards. Um, in this team weekly, monthly, quarterly review, the objective is making frequent ch checkpoints for reviews of the bigger picture. So that means that um, in, it's a checkpoint where we need to see what is our how is our performance doing and what can we do as a team or as, or as individuals to improve the performance of the organization. Why I'm making emphasis on this is because I've heard of LCs who do not check performance in their team meetings and they actually only see their performance when the LC coach comes into a LC visit, which is crazy because actually how can you improve the performance of your LC if you don't see at the same time, it can be overwhelming or confusing for people. Oh, how do I report? What is the thing that I should be reporting? All these things. So don't worry. I will show you how we do it in MC meeting. And I think it's a good um, example for you to follow as well. Yeah. So some of the things is that I learned uh, in my last few terms as MC and also when I was LCP is that people should be excited to attend your MC meeting or your EV meeting. A lot of times uh, we are like, how to say, like when there's team meeting everyone is like tired or scared or anxious and they don't want to come and i think this is the thing that for me is the hardest to achieve as mcp like i always want my people to be very happy about mc meeting but it sometimes doesn't happen sometimes they're just scared or they're anxious because of the performance or something like that so you need to remember that um at the end of the day you should create a space that is mc meeting that is not too long but it's really efficient and it's really exciting for people to attend and they can look forward because it's a team space at the end of the day. Even your review performance is a team space. So you need to think about that. And then the space should be very, very efficient and productive. A lot of times I think some people would get frustrated in a meeting when it's really long um, because they feel that they could be doing some other stuff with their life or they could even be executing work and the space will be more productive. So how can you design an environment that enables everyone to feel that they're being, that they're being heard and that their input is being considered and also 
that you are actually coming up with solutions and ideas and it's a very productive space for everyone and it's not just another thing that actually could have been an email or could have been like a chat over whatsapp but actually it's really important to be there and then lastly it really needs to meet the objective which is to manage the performance of the team if it doesn't meet the objective then there's no point of having the, the team meeting at the end at the end of the day so with that the key thing that you need to learn how to do and i think this is the hardest is to prioritize topics that you're gonna put in a team meeting. So you always need to ask yourself, what is the thing that only like the whole team must know? If the whole team doesn't know, then it will not move forward. You always need to ask yourself this thing. Because a lot of times we are like tempted to put every little thing that we think everything is a crisis, everything needs to be discussed, everything needs to be talked about, then we put everything in a team meeting. But no, you can generate other spaces like synergy meetings, corner meetings, doesn't need to be everything in one space. So you need to learn and prior and like practice a lot and ask a lot of feedback to make sure that you can prioritize topics properly. And then there's a very simple flow that I always follow in my MC meetings. So one of them is check-in, which I also do team space in that check-in. Um, and why I do team space there is because it's something that is very fast. Like I invest 20 to 30 minutes. And what I do in that space is I, I have different people from my MC team because uh, moderator always ch change for meeting to meeting. And then I always ask them to host like a small either lead space or a, a fun activity or get to know activity so we get to know each other deeper and deeper. And then it's uh, really interesting. And since we, since we started doing this like a few months ago, our team meetings have become more refreshing. And then you, it's very cool to see different style of different people when they're hosting this kind of space. So for example, they will do um like sharing session or they will do like games like audrey last time she made like a game that we had to walk around the office blindfolded and things like that for like 20 30 minutes and then there's a simple debrief that always connects to our team values or to ISO values and our behaviors yeah then uh secondly is overall operations so we just check out what is our performance based on the focus of the month after that performance appraisal which means checking the individual performance of the team then setting priorities for the next week and then having feedback and appreciation space. So for feedback and appreciation, it's just feedback no? and then at the end, any appreciation that anyone wanna give to anyone in the team. So my whole meeting lasts one hour and a half, is really fast. And in comparison to the previous term, I think my previous team, it lasted like five hours, four, four to five hours, it was very long. So now I cut it down to one hour and a half. Yeah, so I will give you an example from my MC team. Uh, just for you to know how we do it. So I will literally take you through the slides of uh, one of our MC meetings. So this is our slides and this meeting is from the New Year's time. So that's why we had like this GIF here that Xiaomi put because she was the moderator at that time. Yeah, and then the first thing that we do is we assign meeting roles. So in that time, a moderator was a, the, was Govi, timekeeper was Cynthia, minotaker was Audrey, action was Sufe, and lunch, uh, Sarah was in charge of lunch. So for us, we always have the roles always rotate. I'm not the moderator every time. I'm only the moderator when I want to change the structure in the MC meeting to improve it. Um, and then we, vo we have people volunteering to take the time, to take minutes, uh, to take action steps. So the difference between minutes, minutes and action steps is that the action steps are specific actions that need to be taken and that are recorded in a spreadsheet and minutes is just recording the whole conversations for people especially if there's someone not attending the meeting they can check it then we take attendees and absent people and then we decide for the for the next week so we just brief everyone of who's going to be in charge of next week yep then after that we present the agenda of the meeting which is normally the same thing every week uh, which is the structure that you can see here meeting roles ogv igv and igt updates uh, sprints, updates, defining weekly priorities, and feedback. That's all. Yep. So the first space that we have is celebration space. So for this space, it's like if there's anything cool that they want to share, this is a, like we have like six minutes, and then anyone who achieved anything in their life, uh, most of the time personally, sometimes also about work, they can share. So for example, like, oh, I finished this exam, or I have a girlfriend or anything that it is like you can just share and then everyone will celebrate with you so it's just a celebration space so we can start the meeting on a positive note uh, and then we have a check-in space which takes uh, like I told you 20 to 30 minutes so this time this is the question that we were asking and then we shared in pairs and then we did a debrief of our reflection um, and we reflected on the team value as well then after that before going to the actual operation we remind each other of our goal 
So these are like our main targets um, or the main things that we want to achieve in the first semester. I mean, until the first semester, like after refining, actually change a bit. But generally, this is like the slide of that time where like that is our goal, our actual, and we just remind everyone what is happening in our current state, just in our metrics. And then we go by products. So we start with OGV. Uh, then the, the how the space works is that we have two minutes for the OGV product head to give highlights, and then we have five minutes for Q&A and feedback or clarification. So how, how the highlights work is that we have this scoreboard which shows the performance um, and is always focused. So you can see on the upper part, there are a lot of instructions like for marketing, these are the, <coughs> these are the, the key things that you should be reporting on in your highlights. And for OGB, this is the focus. Then we have entity to entity update and then inferences, highlights, um, and current solutions, uh, solutions and way forward. Yeah, so from the, for uh, the VPs, they need to prepare before coming to the meeting. They, they update the data here in the spreadsheet, in the, in the PPT, and then they, they will infer from the data what are the key highlights, they will talk about it. And after that, um, they provide us with a burning question that they have. So Benjamin, in that week, he was asking, what is the way to downscale IR properly during, cons the, during conference, or just your approach? So in that meeting, actually, we give a lot of suggestion to him that you can see here. So what we do is that we, we give a lot of suggestion to him and then he collect that, that suggestion. And it's also a space for us to ask questions to him, like, okay, so why is this happening? What, what is happening here? What is happening there? So everyone get an update. So in seven minutes, we cover all of this and we have an update of overall performance of the department. And then we go with IGV, it's the same process. We have the operation update. Then we have a question, a uh, burning question from Kiki. And yeah, then we ask questions as well. And then IGE, IGT, we, op we update the progress of the product. IGET, IGT, IGE, uh, also the sales part from national sales. And lastly, the question, the burning question from Tavi. Yeah. So after we finish all the operations updates, we go to sprints follow up. So just to clarify what are sprints, sprints are like very short term, one to two months, um, small, Act, uh, like projects or like coordinated activities that need to happen in the team. But it's not, it's not really like a long-term project, but it's something very small. For example, internal comms, for example, Newsweek Forum, for example, AM50. So in this space, if we have anything that is not about operations, but the whole team need to know about, maximum uh, three to four, we have them here, like EVMT Bootcamp and NPM. So it's just for everyone to know what's happening. So the PIC will report like, okay, this is the sprint, this is the KPI of the sprint, this is what's happening this week, this is the deadline, and to let everyone know. So it's just a very brief update. It takes like two minutes actually, and people can ask questions or note down feedback for, for the PIC of the specific sprint. Yeah, and then after that, we go through weekly priorities. So actually weekly priorities are based on the PA of the MC team. So every month, every MCVP has a, a specific KPI that they need to achieve and specific priorities that they need to achieve. So how it looks like, if I want to show you, is like this low. So you can see here, for example, let's say January, uh, the KPI is uh, number of applicants, the target is 200, the achievement is 48, and then these are the priorities. In this case, it's Benjamin. So he had to achieve 100 of SOP creation and downscaling for summer peak, 100% of EPs on national standard tracker and 100% of meeting with our partners and strategy implementation plan. So these are the priorities of the month, right? So based on the priorities of the month, Benjamin should be uh, setting his weekly priority. So how it looks like is like this. So you see on top of here, we have the KPI, like the screenshot of the, of the tracker. And then here they have their, sorry, they have the, the specific things like, first of all is learning. So what did he learn from last week? Um, okay, so here, for example, he has like, okay, onboarding Gina as IR manager is really important. Then secondly, is like, there's lack of proper coordination for OGB summer attraction plan and other tracks, other, other tasks are distracting him from his progress. So he's learning about how can he make his work more efficient when he's having a lot of work to do at the same time. And then he will, he would report on last week key activities that needed to be done which is session outline preparations, goal setting, and strategy proposal for our partners, and LCVP onboarding. So he would say done or not done. And then this week, key activity to achieve the goal. So you can see these four things, and then the support needed 
um, that he needs from the team. So this is an overview that you can see, like what are the what is the performance. So in this space, as an MCP, I evaluate how Benjamin is performing, and then in my one-to-one -one with him, I know what to talk about. Um, and even I can ask questions or give suggestions. But it's a space that we only talk about the most important thing for him to achieve, which is the three priorities that he has here, here, and here, as well as his target and achievement. Yep. So that is what we do with every single uh, person in the team. And then uh, as an MCP, I also, I also report uh, for them just for accountability purposes. So I can let them know, for example, uh, what did I learn from last week? Um, uh, SG utilization can be improved. It's good to, uh, to focus on IR. Need to have more realistic planning for PM. Need to increase MC execution. Uh, and then team issues are being solved need to focus on helping people to for personal direction. People are able to give each other feedback more timely, which is awesome, good job everyone. So it's a space for me to give an overview of my perception of the team and what's happening. At the same time, my learnings that I'm having as leading the team. And then also I report on the key, acti the key activities that I needed to do. And also the things that I will have in the other, uh, in the other week long. So for example, MRD, OGV coordination, summer peak tracking, SGV, SG follow-up, EVMT bootcamp and PM preparation, and follow-up on SD LCD strategy for summer. So those are the things that I need to do, though. And then I, <coughs> <coughs> I also let them know, like, the support needed for me to achieve that. So it's good that you're reporting as LCP just for them to know what's happening, even though you don't have, like, KPIs or things like that, because actually your KPI is to make sure that they can achieve. So it's good for you to report as well to them. Yeah. And then after that, we have a space for announcements. So basically here, um, in this week, it was about Earn Your Blue, which is the AI campaign. So I just give them some information. Um, and then GDPR compliance, uh, which is another uh, topic that I wanted to talk to them. So it's basically an announcement. And then we have the out of office, because since we work full time, we need to report on that as well. So here, we just let each other know, like, OK, what's happening with our um, our like who's going traveling where and lastly we have feedback for the meeting which is what we will and even better if and that's all so that is how we host our team meeting um and then some notes that i had uh for you based on when i was preparing this space is that first of all mc meeting and meeting meeting is not the same so don't take this template and copy paste it because i will send you these slides as well so don't copy paste it and then do exactly the same thing i think you need to also work on like how to say, um, to customize it to LC reality because it's not really the same. We work full time, so it's different. Then second of all is make sure that department meeting happens soon after EV meeting, maybe the next day, and make sure that you create a routine for your team. So instead of having like every week you need to figure out when it's EV meeting, you make sure that every, you have a very clear routine. For example, for us, MC meeting is always Tuesday 10 to 11 a.m., 11.30 a.m. Every Tuesday, it doesn't change. And everyone knows it's a routine and it will never change. It's always like that. Um, and lastly, is also make sure that your synergy thought points happen before MC meeting. So for example, for us, we have MC meeting on Tuesday, but Monday, we have meetings based on synergy. So for example, OGV with marketing, PM with OD, finance with IGV and PD, uh, PD with IGT. So that's how all the synergy meetings happen on Monday. Then Tuesday, we all gather. So when we gather together as a team, people have already talked to each other as synergies. Yeah, and then make sure that you keep the most important thing the most important thing. So which means that um, in the MC, in the EB meeting, really talk about the priority of the month. Because people can go away and start talking about a lot of random stuff that don't have anything to do with what should be happening in the month based on timeline and based on their planning. So you are, have to hold your team accountable to be focused on the topic that needs to be done. Yep, and then lastly, I think my key learning about this kind of thing is like there's no perfect flow and you should keep improving it. Um, so for me, for example, I've changed the way we do MC meeting, I think at least six times. So I change it very, very often, always try to make it more efficient, always try to make it even more fun and always try to make it more focused and a space that can really help them to perform better because that's the objective of the space. And also to help me understand how can I support them better. So you feel free to change it as much as you need until you feel very satisfied, which will always be improved. Actually, I'm already going to change it for the next empty meeting that they're going to have without me. I'm already going to change the slides because I, now after replanning, there's a change on how we're working. So I need to change it and I want to make it even more efficient. 
So in that sense, if you want to know how MC is working, from next week onwards, you can start attending our MC meetings, uh, which I like the same time, uh, Tuesdays, 10 a.m. And also, um, you can also stay, uh, stay updated because in my newsletter, I always put the slides of MC meeting. So you actually can always access every week of our MC meeting. And if, if I don't send it anytime for any reason, you can always just go to the MC folder which you can find here, this folder called MC Malaysia. You can go to MC Team, and then you can go to Team Meetings. Then you can go to Moonshot, Moonshot Meeting, I think it's called the folder. Yeah, MC Moonshot Meeting. And you can find all of our meetings here for the whole term. We put it here every week. So every week you can find like everything, every information, every single detail, everything, and you can update yourself on what's happening and like that. So I do recommend you to actually go through it. And like, if you really want to know more, you can always go there. It's totally transparent for you. Yeah. So after this, I just want to know if there's any questions that you have. This also has been recorded, so you will be able to see it again. Yeah. Question for me. Um... Can you let us know more on the synergy meeting? What, what is exactly discussed in the synergy meeting itself? What needs to be discussed before the... And why is it necessary before the MC meeting itself? Yeah. So in the synergy meetings, they check more on the detail of their work. So to give you an example, let's say Sarah and Benjamin write OGV and marketing because they have, let's say, for January and February, they need to focus on attraction. So let's say Sarah and Benjamin will update each other on their plans. So literally, they open the planning tool and then they show each other, okay, so this week I should be doing, um, I don't know, the website and then Benjamin, okay, I should be coordinating IR with Gina. So they will update each other, man, like this is what's happening, then um, they will give each other feedback, they will um, give each other suggestion, and basically it's just to let each other know what's happening in their each department and where is the overlap of work, because there's always synergy needed. And after that, what they do together is that they define together their priorities for the next week based on their priorities of the month, you know? So it depends on the department, it depends on the synergy. But if you want to know more, I mean, I think I can ask the MC to teach your VPs also how to have synergy meetings. Lab. But basically, the key thing to talk about in a synergy meeting is to review your plan because your plans have been created in synergy as well. So basically, you just need to open your planning, check it with your, with your partner, and then give each other a suggestion on how you can improve. And that's it, no? That's what people do in a synergy meeting. It depends on the activity that you're executing together. Then, Eva, do you attend all the synergy meetings as well? Not, not now, but in the beginning, yes. And it also depends. For example, like, let's say, uh, in the beginning I do because I want to make sure that they know how to have synergy meeting lab. So I attend quite a lot of them. Now, how I do is that after OGV and marketing have synergy meeting, because it's my focus product, the last 10 minutes, I will, I will be there and then they update me on what happened. So in the MC meeting, I don't need to ask them any question. And then for um, IGV, before the conference, I was attending a few of their meetings because, uh, because of the pricing model. So it's like more like on demand lab. Yeah. And if they need me to attend, they will tell me, like, I need you to come to this meeting. Or maybe in a one-to-one, -one, if I see a problem or anything that I can actually help as an MCP, then I will tell them that I want to attend their meeting. But in the beginning of my term, yes, I attend all the synergy meetings for, like, one month, I think, until they get the gist of how to do the synergy meeting, and then I don't attend anymore. So I think I wouldn't say you have to be there, but it's... Depends on on you la and the capacity of your team and if they can actually do it or if they actually need you. And so Yep. Any more questions? If no, can you put a wave on the chat box? Cool. Uh if I have a question. Yeah. Yes. I have a question regarding the synergy meeting again. Uh, yeah, since like synergy meeting is going to be done like between like, for example, in the case of IGV is going to be attended by P, IGV and might be at uh, uh, the department meetings also be done um, like before EV meeting? Or, 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 or. No, 
uh, my suggestion is uh, after an EB meeting, you can have department meeting. So because your BPs need to have clear direction of the department after before they go to a department meeting. So for example, I'm a VPPD. I have uh, like, let's say first I have a meeting with my the IGVVP, we talk about what's happening uh, with the department, then we go to MC meeting, we get feedback from the team and from the LCP, and then after that I have department meeting. So in the department meeting I can tell my team, okay, based on our the month's uh, focus, these are the priorities that we need to do, then I can delegate tasks specifically to the team. Yeah, so that is how uh, the team should work. La. The department meeting is more about showing the overall performance of the team and then delegating, defining together specific activities that they will be doing. So for a VP, the priority can be like, make sure that we, um, I don't know, that we are executing the strategy of attraction or the execution of the event. But for a member, the execution is like, go and talk to the lecturer about this and this. So it's a very specific action. So that's how it's different, no? Yeah. Okay, understood. Okay, so I'm going to write down also... Um, um, Yeah, so I already write down the key learning for me is that maybe you need more guidance on synergy meeting, but I think it's good luck. Uh, yeah, so anything else? Iggy, uh, if you need me to clarify again, you can text me later, la, and then I can tell you again if you didn't catch what I said because suddenly you went off. <coughs> okay, so then... After this, I think we can, if no more questions, we can go to the last part, which is what we will and even.